Hi, I'm Ryan. And I'm Shane. And welcome to Top 5 Beatdown, a show where we compare top fives for topics that seem completely asinine, yet somehow garner strong opinions. Today's topic is MCU deaths. And today's expert is a pop culture analyst at New Rockstar's YouTube channel. Please welcome to the Beatdown, Eric Voss. Hello. Thank you for having me. Welcome to Beat Town. So you, you come from New Rockstar's YouTube yes. channel. What do you do over there? We uh, obsess over and go through every Marvel trailer or, or movie trailer. We'll do everything that you missed in it. We try to do some theories as well. We try to theorize where things are going. Uh, our, our batting average is mixed. Well, look. Well, as is everybody's. Yeah. The, the, the fun is the journey. It's not the That's destination. Right. Theorizing is fun. The real friends are the polar bears we made along yeah. the way. All right, uh, before we get into this, let's actually go over the rules for this uh, ranking session. Okay. Uh, we're talking about top five MCU deaths. That means MCU films. That is anything from now, Iron Man. Hey, Ryan. I'm a relative newbie here. What does MCU stand for? You know, that's a good question, Shane. It's the Marvel Cinematic Universe. That's anything from the 26 feature films that the MCU had. That's Iron Man 2008 to The Eternals 2021, right. and as well as the uh, Disney Plus TV shows like Loki, uh, WandaVision, Cap Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yeah, those guys. That's not gonna make the list. <laughs> <laughs> okay, before we get into our list, let's have a word from our sponsor, Hunt a Killer. Well, we'd like to thank Hunt a Killer for sponsoring this episode of Top 5 B-Town. Look, we all know that true crime would be in my top five genres, and that may not be the case for everyone, but with Hunt a Killer, you're gonna have all your friends hooked by the end of the night. Hunt a Killer is an immersive subscription box experience sent straight to your door. Each month, you'll unpack piles of documents, evidence, audio recordings, and case files. These will help you eliminate unlikely suspects and identify murder weapons until you've solved the crime. Fair warning though, once you get started, it'll be hard to stop because Hunt a Killer isn't just about winning the game. It's about the backstories of the suspects and the complicated relationships they have with the victims. It's about the memories you can create hanging out with your friends, trying something new together. And nothing brings friends closer together than murder. Best of all, subscribing to Hunt a Killer helps solve actual cold cases because part of the proceeds are sent directly to the Cold Case Foundation. Go to huntakiller.com slash watcher and use code watcher to get $10 off your purchase. Happy hunting, everyone. Now back to the show. All right, we're back. And now, let's, let's list. list. Eric, what's your number five? So when I'm ranking mine, I want to see deaths that are visceral. I want them to be clear deaths. Okay. You want uh, gore? And, and you want to feel it. Yeah, you, I like a good wet death is what I call it. Like, oh, there's Whoa. fluids. You see blood. And most of the time you don't see blood. That's People just true. get a little crispy. Yeah. My number five is the driest on my list. So, oh, but shit. it's, there's waterworks other places. So my number five is... Vision in Avengers Infinity War. And I will also reveal my number five, which is also Wow. Vision. I have to confess something. Before his death in Avengers Infinity War, I was not a fan of the character of Vision in How the could MCU. You be? I love Paul Bettany. I loved him better as Jarvis. Yeah. Uh, but once they turned him into a red synthesoid, yeah. they kind of stripped away a lot of his humanity. But Vision's death was so hard to look at when Thanos pried his big purple sausage fingers, <laughs> really that did. mind stone out of his head. <laughs> you see his vibranium flesh implode in, and then he just turns into a lightless gray husk yeah, and tossed aside. <laughs> and this was after he had just died already moments <laughs> earlier. We had back-to-back -back deaths. The movie rewound time to kill him again and somehow it hurt us even more. He turns him into a fucking vice verse. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's fucking amazing. <laughs> years, Ryan and I spent years just loving that. Yeah. Because yeah. I love to see that guy dead. Actually, you're going to love this. One year uh, for Halloween, <laughs> Ryan and I dressed up on an episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved Postmortem as Vision. Dead Vision. Dead Vision. Did you post a photo? I did, I posted a photo of Double Vision on my Instagram and uh, Paul Bettany liked it and said, love this Whoa. boys. He said, love this boys. And then, didn't he unlike it He realized that the re we were doing that to mock Vision and then later oh. recanted his statement by deletion. Paul, has nothing to do with you. I think you're a fantastic 
actor. I saw Uncle Frank, great performance. They didn't give you a lot to do here other than get stabbed. Great stabbing faces though, Paul. Because when he oh. got stabbed, yeah. Was, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, funny guy, funny death. Number five, Shane. My number five MCU death is. I'm really struggling there. Ebony Maw! Oh my god, I forgot mm -hmm. to list this one! That's uh, so and, good. and that is a heartfelt rest in peace. That is good. I fucking love this man. He's a great guy. I love his sort of fashion sense. Yeah. I love that he's such a hype man it's for the true. big guy. Mm -hmm. He is. You know, he's out here saying, hey everybody, party's about to start. You're all gonna die. <laughs> Every time he just steps off the spaceship. And then his death is just a beautiful, beautiful, peaceful thing. I forgot mm -hmm. he has his little spiel. Mm -hmm. Rejoice. <laughs> you are about to die at the hands of the children of Thanos. And you could tell he's like really yeah. probably rock hard on down yeah. below. He, he practiced those lines. Yeah, that guy's a humble he's personage. <laughs> <laughs> your My humble he gets to fight Spider-Man on a spaceship and then he freezes forever. If I'm a person in the Marvel Universe, I'm looking up at the sky at night thinking, somewhere up there in the beautiful inky darkness, a frozen ebony maw is just floating. A, a nice and I could wish upon him. Here. Like I a, guess this is more like a love letter to Ebony Maw. Yeah. <laughs> um, Good death, too. Solid death, executed well. Yeah, what happens to him? He, did, you just say, xenomorph. did you just say what happens he goes to into, him? He goes into space. On your own death. list? What I said he gets frozen <laughs> in space. Yeah, there's 26 films. I don't remember the details of most of these deaths. I just know how I felt when it happened. Well, I'm glad you and had the board. when this happened, I thought, what a beautiful send-off to a beautiful man. Eric? Yes, my number four is... Frank. Yes! Who? He has the most tragic and unsettling death. Wait, before you continue, do you know who Frank is? Yes or no? No, of course okay, I mean, don't. Okay, cool. I'm not gonna pretend I know when I, I'm not here to do that. I'm not here to, you know. Yes! In the first Ant-Man film, yeah. uh, Darren Cross, Corey, uh, Corey Stoll's character, yeah. yes. he has a rival corporate leader at, uh, at his company, yes. who's just like, mm, I think we might need to go back to formula. I don't think <laughs> this works. And then uh, Darren Cross, who's still trying to perfect the PIM tech, uh, shrinking technology, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. he uses yeah. the same weapon on Frank just to get him out of the way. And then he shrinks him and grabs like a paper towel and just smears him up in the paper oh, towel and flushes honestly, him. Well, first off, okay. wet. Wet that's, death. That's a wet that's, death. A wet that's, death. That's, he haunts me. His death haunts me. That would yeah, be, I would never want to die that that's way. That's haunting. I'm surprised none of us had Frank on our list. It's really good. It's really strong. It's a good one. It's, a, that's it's why, really strong. That's why he's the analyst. Yeah. Uh, here comes my number four. My number four is Killmonger. Yeah, Killmonger. Killmonger, I like the Killmonger death just because, first off, it's a beautiful ending. I think his death is a little bit more meaningful because his death more than any other villain death in the MCU actually affects the psychology of the hero in a way that changes him for the good. The Killmonger death originally, the original line before they did reshoots was him saying, uh, it's a beautiful sunset, which is still in the movie. But then he says, after that, I wish everyone else who came from where we came from could actually see it. He's referring to Oakland. They cut that, Ron Coogler cut that because he thought that the villain shouldn't tell the hero literally what to do at the uh. end of a movie. So they just left it at beautiful sunset and then obviously Black Panther comes to that conclusion himself. He has this great like final line that I think is one of the coldest final words of any character, just bury me in the ocean like my ancestors who jumped yeah. off the ships because they knew it's, death is better than bondage. It's so good. And it's incredible. I've never seen a death affect a hero like, you know what, maybe he had a little bit of a point. It's always yeah. like, hey, fuck that guy, he's dust now. Right. But in this case, <laughs> he's like, maybe I should change some shit. Killmonger, that's all I gotta yeah, say about it. It's very death. emotionally affecting. It belongs on there. It does. Okay, my number four is those those miscellaneous super soldiers uh, from <laughs> Civil War. When they just shoot them in the head in the tubes? Yeah. yeah. Here's the thing. Bucky, one of my least favorite characters in the entire MCU. Boring guy. And that entire movie, they're like, they got more of these super soldiers. They got them in the tubes. I'm thinking, fun for now. But at the end of this, we're gonna be chilling with like a whole handful of these boring, strong, mean super soldiers. Yeah. They're gonna be fighting. Well, how do they fight? They punch each other. Yeah. Cool. And then we get there, and my man Zemo. Who doesn't love them some Zemo? <laughs> he read my mind. He did the work. <laughs> it was like if I could have just paused the movie, 
grabbed some sort of cell phone that allowed me to talk to fictional characters. I would have called up Baron Zemo and said, can you go ahead and just shoot those guys in the head? While they were asleep. Yeah. yeah. And he did it. It's great. They weren't even awake! Eric, what do we got for your number three? My number three is Thanos. The first time. <laughs> the first time he dies. When Thor finally goes for the head, and I think what makes it for me is that spray of purple Thanos blood that hits Nebula in the face. You hear the thud of Josh Brolin's head it's rumbling big. around on the it's floor. Big. It's a big boulder ass head. Yeah. He never finishes whatever stew he was making. Lots of questions. That's that true. Scene. That stew low key looked delicious. Whatever it was. Get it, on it, binging with Batman. It's, it's, and then Thor, in defeat, walks out of frame. He goes out of focus. We fade to black. And then five years later. The, oh man. The, the theater lost their mind when no. that happened, when I, I saw it. Also, it's like the only death I could think of where he should be victorious, but you immediately feel deflated. Yeah. It cuts to Rocket and he's just like, what did you Why just did do? You do that? It makes you feel worse about the world, that death, just killing someone isn't the answer. And this is the first time you see a hero act impulsively, yeah. like a villain would, and it doesn't help. Right, and it's wet. <coughs> wet, we see, Very you know, wet. It's, it, we're how, getting wetter. Wet getting, all over the face. <laughs> yeah. Uh, should we go to three here, for me? Please. Three for you. My number three is... Good. Oh! Yondu. Yondu. I'm not gonna lie, Great. if we're talking about wetness, Oh boy. I did not expect this one to make me cry. That's the thing that was beautiful about it. Him coming into his own as a character, realizing that he was a father, and then sacrificing then himself for his son is an incredible moment. How does he uh, die? I don't remember. Yondu? He Stay goes into space yeah. and he gives his oxygen a yeah. mask to the little... Peter Quill, and then he freezes over. Very like Ebony Ma. Oh, so like another, that, another frozen one. Oh my God, I got yeah. like chills thinking of his last line. What does he say? He says like he, boy. no, he said that like, he may have been your father, but he wasn't your daddy. Yeah, that's very yeah. sweet. And I, oh, yeah, just, yeah, and he has a funny little whistle. Yeah. That's all. My number three is uh, Vision. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like to see him go gray. I love to see yeah. him go gray. That's true. He's a silver fox. I, I'll just uh, loop that scene. You get it. It's funny. <laughs> On to our number twos. Yes. Eric, what do you got? My number two is the Hulk from What If Episode 3. Oh my God. What if? No, I did not see. <laughs> it's been what a busy if. year. I haven't gotten to the what ifs yet, but yeah. tell me about it. What, what if we haven't seen what if? <laughs> okay, that's fine. In What If Episode 3, it's the what if the Avengers were killed off, basically. He gets hit with something and he's fighting off all the people like he does in the live action movie on the, on the university campus and suddenly he starts inflating. There's a look of panic on Hulk's face and he inflates and he inflates and he inflates and then he pops. Hulk pops? Hulk pops. Hulk pops? Hulk pops. Hey, how wet is this one? Uh, it's a number two wet. I mean, you gotta think, the mist, uh, that's gotta settle at some that's point and cover everything like a nice layer of morning dew. So I think it's pretty wet. I think we're getting wetter. How big does he get? He gets pretty big. He's like so two or three stories that. big, oh. but it's like painful. Like you see, he's like, oh! Yeah. Uh, I don't know why I laughed so hard at the thought of the Hulk just getting bigger and bigger and going, oh, fuck! Ah! <laughs> I mean, that's what happens. Oh, oh shit, 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 no. so Just good. the one F-bomb they've ever allowed in the <laughs> Marvel Universe. It'd be worth oh. it. Oh. 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 <laughs> All right, uh, number two for me is Peter Parker. Oh, yeah. Just that whole moment of seeing Tony Stark realizing the just his failure, his complete and abject failure in taking care of this young boy. You could see he felt the responsibility of that. And him saying, I'm sorry. <laughs> the last thing he says before he, he dies apologizes. is, I'm yeah. sorry. It's he so failed. He failed. fucking brutal. Another reason why this death is high up on my list, because it really did bring a moment of joy for me um, the second time I watched. First time, I was in shambles. Second time, no. I just wanna, I wanna put a disclaimer on top of this story. I'm not a monster, okay? But this kid had it coming. There's a little kid sitting next to me. He's about seven years old. He's in a full Spider-Man outfit. Most of the movie, he is talking at the screen, but especially when Spider-Man comes up, he literally, he's like got his foot on the railing and he's going I didn't say anything to this kid because I knew, oh, this is gonna be great when Spider-Man dies. The whole movie, he's just getting more and more annoying and it gets to the moment and Spider-Man's like, oh, I don't feel too good. And the kid who's standing, by the way, at this moment, because Spider-Man's on screen. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, when a kid is like, 
you know, they're in their world, they're doing their thing, and then suddenly they kind of come to and they realize like what's happening. He just kind of paused, like in pose like this. And he just starts watching as Spider-Man starts to dissolve. And then you... <laughs> what did he say? I didn't see him cry with his face, but I saw it in his body language because his shoulders <laughs> went like this. Oh. <laughs> and he went, is Spider-Man dead? <laughs> it took every ounce of my being because I'm not a horrible person. I didn't go, yes. And that's why you don't talk at the movies. I almost said that. <laughs> it's an Arrested Development reference. It's a Gene Parmesan moment. Yeah, exactly. You gotta tell your kids to be quiet at the movie theater. If you're taking your kids to see a comic book film about Spider-Man, you have to be reverent of the grown man seeing it for a second exactly. time. Right. My! Number two is. Ooh. Oh, wow. Pietro. We have, an, we have an Age of Ultron appearance. <laughs> oh, well, I thought long and hard about it. And this to me was sort of an unexpected delight. Because when that movie started, I was like, what's the kick ass guy doing here? <laughs> They're sort of toeing the line with him. He's supposed to be Quicksilver, but he kind of isn't. When he showed up in this thing, I was like, I can't look at this guy's dead eyes for 25 <laughs> more movies. I can't believe we have to stick with him. Wanda's his sister. Mm -hmm. Wanda's his sister. Wanda okay. Maximoff. I don't like them. I don't, I don't like their magic, the way they move their hands around and it looks like wizard stuff. You sound like a Fox News correspondent. <laughs> I don't like them. I don't like their magic and the way they move their hands around. What does that mean? What does that mean when he does that? I don't like that? their whole situation. They were t twins, but they seemed romantic. There was sexual energy between them. There was, them for sure. like, really strong sexual energy. Well, in they were banging in Godzilla. You're you for, they they forgot what and, movie they were in. You're, they were husband and wife in the same They were kissing in the other film. Again, I do not remember how he dies at all. He gets shot to shot death. Shot by Ultra. <laughs> he gets shot to death, saving he Hawkeye, saves Hawkeye and a little and a boy. Child. Wait, with a gun? Yeah, well, he has <laughs> like with a- With turrets from a, a jet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. I love that he shows up and then gets killed in the same movie. It's a good wet death. He bleeds, he, he which is bleed. great. Does he bleed? He bleeds. You see, his body is littered with with bullets. Yeah. I gotta. He, he's I gotta, really. He I gotta, really I gotta gets, check this out. Yeah, he really gets uh, the uh, body and Clyde. I'm pulling death. that up on YouTube and it's setting it to 0.25. Watch that one in slow mo. Well, the funny thing Watch is, each bullet go into his boring ass body. Jesus Christ. <laughs> the, the thing is, he wasn't fast enough in the end to. Kind of <laughs> yeah, I guess. Do you think a speedster yeah. could just move them out of the yeah, way? Pretty the funny bullets. that the fast guy gets shot. <laughs> Okay, our number ones. All right, so my number one is Loki. But this one has no resurrections this time. No, and it's a right. good, wet death. Again, sound mixing is great. You oh, they, man. They get this great so uh, neck snap sound, sound effect. Wet. Thanos uh, is able to see the move coming, grabs him by the throat, and Loki's final words are, you will never be a god. Yeah. And then his neck gets snapped, and then, like Vision, ragdoll corpse dropped on the ground. I also love that he walks with his corpse for yeah. like a good three to four <laughs> steps before he like moving around. He's like, where should I drop this motherfucker? <laughs> yeah. And it was a little wet. He was pretty snotty. Pretty wet. His yeah. blood, wet. his face turned a little purple. Yeah. Thor was crying. That's it's a true. wet death. I feel like it's the scariest out of a lot of the deaths oh, in yeah. the MCU, because you're like, ah! It's the most visceral. Because <laughs> yeah. they jump right into it. I don't know about you guys, but there's something to me that's more horrifying about someone getting their neck broken yeah. than any, yeah. almost any other death. Like, even getting their head chopped off, it doesn't affect me as much as just seeing someone's neck snap. I would rather have my neck snapped than, I guess, other ways. Oh. I had a dream once that I got stabbed in a park. But when you get your head cut off, your head's just on the ground. It's almost like, okay, we parted ways, we could, <laughs> we could, we could process that. But yeah. when your neck snapped and we propped Shane up, your yeah. head's so large and, and heavy, it's, I imagine. It's, heavy. it's just like, yeah. you know, just hanging there like a, like a broken popsicle stick. Oh, yeah, that thing was, that with, was a, with a golf ball on top of it. It's so rare that you have like the actual moment someone's death happens. Yeah, Most you, of the time they don't cut away. Because you could see Thanos' hand do this. Yeah. <laughs> which is like, oh, 
I just remember in the theater, I don't, I don't think I responded like Quagmire. I didn't go, oh! I didn't go, oh! <laughs> <laughs> For Thanos to snap his neck, say no resurrections this time, there is a sense of finality to this character, and part of the MCU dies with him as it was in its current form. Mm. So the only way we can have Loki uh, exist again in the MCU or any of these characters who die is by expanding into a multiverse. That's a great list. That's a great list. I respect that. That's a respectful list. list. Thank you. This is a great list too, and I'm excited to find out your number one. Ryan, let's have it. Let's do it. Number one for me is, I'm holding for effect. That's good. You have to say hold, if you don't say hold for effect when you hold for effect, you're not really holding for effect. Okay, that was enough. Tony Stark, oh I forgot he died. (laughs) (laughs) Oh that one. Unbelievable, no respect. Uh, I mean, what do you have to say about this one that hasn't already been said? I would say that this kind of kicked off the next chapter of the MCU, because he was the leader. It started with Iron Man, it ends with Iron Man, now we're entering a new phase. It had an enormous effect on Peter Parker, which we'll probably still see the effects of. Just a, just a constant stream of tears coming out of my face when I, when I watch this bad boy die. Also, if you see a still of him dead, it's pretty gross. Like, his face is all... Kentucky Fried and his, his he's eyes. He's crispy. He's crispy as fuck. Well, he got that juice all up in him, you know? Mm. That's true. The ring juice or he the, does, he, the stone he, juice. Yeah, he's got that stone juice, that's true. Obviously the most memorable death, I think, in the MCU. He's yeah. the biggest star. But I just think, like, now after his death in the title sense, we all wonder, did Tony Stark logically need to die in Endgame? Like, they're still playing with all of his toys. In this moment, he w- he needed to do it in the in the way the plot was going in terms of like yeah. the fight, because it was just, he saw the moment that he needed to sacrifice himself. He, he says like the line at the end, the, the, the thing that he says in the first movie, that I am Iron Man. It yeah. was a nice um, uh, bookend. Yeah. Good a nice, a nice, a a nice little bookend. And I don't know about you guys, but when I was watching Endgame, I went into it knowing, okay, either Captain America or Tony Stark is gonna die. So anytime they had like one-on-one fight scenes with Thanos, I was pretty horrified that I was gonna see a pretty gruesome death. And uh, the way they did it was just so beautiful. Um, the light flickering out was really effective. The, oh the yeah. Chest oh, yeah I, mean, I mean, the execution of it. Is incredible. Yeah. But you know what, I'm gonna give that funeral, the death, the whole execution. It's great, it's really good. Yeah, he does get a funeral. You know, Yondu right. gets one, Tony gets one. I don't know if anyone else in the- Natasha MCU. gets one. Frank didn't get one, Frank I'll tell didn't you that. Get one. Well, they flushed him. Well, they flushed him, I guess it's ceremonial. <laughs> it's water, more, you know, funeral, more than they needed Viking funeral it's, it's in the Viking toilet. a Viking funeral of sorts. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's see your number one. My number one is Zemo's family. <laughs> Baron Zemo's wife and children. <laughs> Number one. I think it's great. Yeah. I think it's really good. No, it's good. <laughs> I think he's my favorite villain in the MCU. I like Thanos a lot, but he's he's my boy. Because his motivations are very grounded, you know? Because they killed his family. <laughs> <laughs> his family's dead. I, I like that it's uh, fallout from decisions that the Avengers made. I just love uh, that it gives him a lot of motivation. And when he's up there on screen, I'm like, like if that movie ended with him Killing all the Avengers, I would have been like, they nailed it. Let's wrap it up. You just kill them all. My man Zemo on top. He proved his point. I hope he gets his own movie someday. And I hope he kills him. I, I hope he kills him. It's certainly a number one choice. This has been the list. I think we all have three great lists. Three solid yeah. lists. A lot of, uh, you know, different opinions, not a lot of overlap. I guess that's what happens that's when good. you have uh, 26 films to work with. And you have different rules over whether an on-screen death has to be on screen. It's not really a rule, it's just more like, you know, when you're talking about satisfying deaths or just ones that affect you, normally you want to see them happen. But that's just the, my the, opinion. That wasn't, it didn't say satisfying, it just said top MCU deaths. That was the prompt I was given. That's true. Hey, they're dead. Well, that does it for our top five beat town. Make sure you guys chime off in the comments to say uh, who you agreed with, who you disagreed with, who you maybe thought got a little too much flack. And once again, thank you to Eric for joining us. Make sure you check out his YouTube channel, New Rock Stars on YouTube. Yeah, we do all kinds of videos about all these characters, and anytime someone dies, we go through it uh, frame by frame to an uncomfortable level of detail. So if you like MCU deaths, we got you covered. Yes. But until then, that's that's the the list. list. There's a, a <laughs> wife in a grave, and two children, or three children, and three There it small is. Things. I think that sums it up right there. It doesn't even know how many children were in the family. I don't know. I, I gotta listen to the voicemail again to do the math on that. <laughs> <laughs>